my journey with Saddleback Church started even before the church was launched, diba? Kasi it was year 2011 when I reached out to a college acquaintance. And I didn't know that he became a pastor pala. Later, I realized I was looking for a purpose in life. Since then, I continued my searching, searching for my purpose. In 2014, that same pastor friend that I reached out to invited me to check a newly launched here in Saddleback Church. Pagpasok mo palang ng pinto, parang everyone is so happy, everyone is smiling, greeting you. But at the same time, behind my mind, parang I still can't believe na meron palang mga taong ganun that uh, there are people who are so warm and who are so loving. When one volunteer actually approached me, yung, yung mga friendly highs and greetings, it just didn't stop there. Mm -hmm. It made me feel that I wasn't just among the crowd. It made me feel very special. Second attendance ko dito sa church, uh, I filled out a connection card. But honestly, at the back of my mind, I was saying sa sarili ko, no one will ever reach out to me. But to my surprise, one Tuesday afternoon, I got a text message from a ministry lead inviting me to go into a training. Being in a corporate world, I'm used to the kind of training that when you're in training, you wear formal, formal uh, dress pa nga, di ba? So that Saturday afternoon, wearing long sleeves polo, I went to the training. <laughs> but eto yung nakakatawa. When I got to the church, nakita ko the chairs are all messed up. Everyone was moving around, chairs and tables everywhere. And then, somebody approached me, sabi pa nga, o oh, tara na. <laughs> Yun pala, that was the start of my training. My training pala is to help him set up the chairs, lift tables, and prepare the place for the worship service. I saw some managers, architects, professors, and even professionals, and even company owners lifting chairs and setting up tents. That scenario actually opened my eyes. I realized one thing, that in serving God, no position, no status, no hurts, past hurts, all of those things does not really matter. What matters most is your heart for Him. So during that time, as early as that time pa lang pala, we were already living out the hashtag whatever it takes attitude yes, of the whatever, volunteers. Yes, whatever it takes. There was so much joy in serving because we are not just lifting chairs and tables, but we were lifting each other up by sharing life together as brothers and sisters in Christ. But when I was in campus care, yun pala, God was just starting with me. Few months after serving in this ministry, campus care, the campus pastor then, Pastor Nair Santos, talked to me and said, Can you lead the first small group campaign as a campaign director? I was actually surprised. In my heart, I was very excited. But in my mind, I really don't know what to do. So after speaking to Tinay, that is when I finally said yes. And they trained me on what to do. This is the first time I heard the saying, God doesn't call the equip, but he equips the call. I was working in Manila at that time, so I have to be intentional with my schedule as a worker, volunteer, and a family man. So after the campaign, I was given more responsibilities and was asked to lead a ministry. This was also the time I started to ask this question, what can I do that has eternal value? I've been asking myself this question without me knowing that God is already answering it. It was April of 2016. I was offered a part-time staff position here in Saddleback Church, Santa Rosa during the time South Manila. And during that time, I started to think of leaving my corporate job to be a full-time minister. Napapakawak ako sa'yo because when I started sharing this with you, I, alam ko, iba tumatakbo sa isip mo noon. So during this time, this is when the first time I heard Pastor Rick saying, reach one more for Christ. And that statement never left my mind. The decision of leaving my job is not an easy decision to make. There were so many adjustments. But God tested our faith and our obedience. That was the first time that Mike said to me that uh, he wanted to be a pastor. So I was taken by surprise. Parang, ah. <laughs> and then, parang feeling ko, baka bugso lang ng damdamin niya na kapag itinulog niya, mawawala na yung ano eh. Because it was all so sudden. Eh. So, so I told him to just sleep it off. But then, I realized that he was really serious 
when he said that he was contemplating on resigning from his corporate job. So, parang ako, ah, okay, seryoso pala talaga siya. So, I had to do some serious thinking. Sabi ko pa nga sa kanya, magkukulang tayo. I told him that. And it was during our Daring Faith campaign in the church. While, while everyone were um, pledging their finances, God wanted something different from us. The Lord wanted us to pledge our time for ministry. So, it was then when I realized that our daring faith was for Mike to leave his corporate job and focus his service to the Lord. So, with a deep breath, we closed our eyes and prayed really hard and took that leap. And during those times, God consoled me. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. So amidst the challenges, my heart was at peace because I knew that following God is and always will be the right decision. I transitioned in ministry from volunteering to full-time to part-time staff to full-time staff. And all throughout those seasons of transition, I realized one thing that God used to be even if I'm broken. In my journey in the ministry, talagang nakikita namin yung ano, God's faithfulness. I've seen that happen in our church, the people I meet, the stories I've heard, the life changes I've witnessed, but all the more I've seen God's faithfulness behind the scenes, right at home, in our family. God has provided and protected us all throughout the years. The year 2020, that's when I finished my uh, seminary got ordained, but due to the uncertainties that's, that's brought about by the pandemic, in one of my conversation with him, with God, I asked this question, God, what's next for me? And I even said that if you still want to use me here, I'm ready. And then things happened. Pastor Matt said that uh, I, we, you'll be the next campus pastor. I can't help but be more grateful when I think about how seven years ago that it was me. I was the one more being reached out for Christ. If there were no friends sharing Jesus to me, no volunteers serving the church and the community and texted me, no staff working week in and out behind the scenes, and no pastors leading churches, I wouldn't be where I am today. Actually, uh, we're actually a very simple couple. We are just a regular family who said yes to God's calling. And as Pastor Rick said, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. That's why we continue to depend and rely on God's power because we know that we are nothing without Him. The seed of faith and obedience that God planted in our hearts seven years ago is the same seed that grew and brought us to where we are now. We are grateful to God and humbled to be given this wonderful opportunity. Whether it's five, 10, 50 years, His calling is clear for me and my family that we will reach one more for Christ.